About a quarter of us weren't here this morning. But I sure am glad to see that we have a lot of people this evening. So I'm going to say a little bit about this morning's lesson. And maybe that will help bring you up to speed. What we talked about this morning were the characteristics of Satan that each and every one of us should try to imitate. Not the bad ones, but the good ones. Satan does have some good attributes, such as Satan is patient. He is not easily discouraged at all. He will wait forever, if that's what it takes, for you to sin so he can have you. Very patient individual. Satan does believe in God. He does believe in heaven, and he's well aware of hell. Satan works day and night. He doesn't give up. He will continuously walk about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. <coughs> he knows God's word. He knows it better than you and I do. He even quoted it to Jesus. And of course you know about the knot in the devil, devil's tail in the Garden of Eden. You surely will not die. He put that knot in there himself. Satan is always looking for someone to convert. He's the best soul winner in the whole earth. He's won every soul that Christ doesn't have. And that's most of the people of the world. Satan accepts people very quickly. If you're a Christ individual and you want to step away for a second, he'll welcome you into his arms. He hates to see you leave if you come back to Christ. But Satan wants to keep you. That's why he's a good soul winner. He works at it day and night. Satan uses all available methods. Anything he can use, he will use. If one thing does not work, he'll try another. And he will go over and over and over each of these until he finds something that will trip your trigger, set you off in his direction. The question is, do you give up when things get demanding for you when it comes to living a pure Christian life? Do you do that or do you just give up? Do you live that life that is set apart for God? That's what a saint is, someone who is sanctified and set apart to do God's will. 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as He has called you as holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. There are many people who think they cannot be righteous. But you can be. You can be. 1 Peter 1 verses 15 and 16. Are you patient and long-suffering when you're challenged with difficulties? Do you get easily discouraged? Do you throw your hands up and walk away and say, I can't do this? Satan's waiting for you. He'd love to see you do that. Can you, with Paul, genuinely say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? Think about it a while. Can you? Or do you just walk away because you're discouraged? Philippians 4, verse 13. Do you really, really, really believe in God? Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Let that sink in. Do you really truly believe 
that God's who He says He is? Or would you rather just stay here in the world of Satan? He's going to reward you either way, whether you believe Him or you don't believe Him. But I think one of those rewards you really don't want. What about eternal life and eternal punishment? Those are the rewards that we're talking about. You can live forever with Christ, or you can receive eternal punishment from that gentleman we talked about this morning, Satan. He'd be happy to have you because he wants everybody to be as miserable as he is. And he will be miserable, crying and moaning. You know, you should believe in those things, but does your life truly coincide with the things that you believe? When people look at you, can they say, that's a Christian there. I know him. I can tell by his works. He's not afraid to talk to you about Christ. He wants to convert you to Christianity. Does your speech and your actions show others without a shadow of doubt that you're a Christian? Do you try to walk a little bit in the world and a little bit on the Christian side? Satan would love for you to do that. Do you really, like Satan, believe in God? We know he does. There's no doubt in our mind that he does. Do you work all the time for the Lord? Are you striving for his kingdom? Are you doing what you should be doing? Are you only a Sunday morning Christian? What do you mean by that? preacher Sunday morning Christian well there are some disciples that seem to have very little time for God and the church unless they need something there are those who need something they'll come to church and they'll tell you what their needs are but you won't see them if they're fulfilled Sunday morning Christians or Sunday evening Christians either way you know, they might come to worship on Sunday morning with some degree of consistency. You may see them 365 days a year, but they're only here on Sunday morning. But what about the extent of their spiritual walk when they're not here on Sunday morning? They're not true Christians, are they? They live a worldly life most of the time and they just pretend to be right with God on Sunday. We know people like that, don't we? Surely we do. Each and every one of us does. I hope that such does not describe you. But I know it does describe many people out there who claim to be Christians. Be honest with yourself. Are you doing as much as you possibly can for the growth of God's kingdom? How many people did you talk to last week about their souls? Any? Maybe one? If you're not doing it, why not? Doesn't the Lord tell you to do that? Didn't He give us a commission to do that? Is there anything more important than serving the Lord in your life? Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Everything. Are you just a part-time disciple? Or are you laboring full-time and putting in lots of overtime for the Lord? Probably not. You're probably not doing that. But if you are, you should be. Do you know the Bible? They, Satan does. Satan can quote it. Can you? If somebody came up to you and said, tell me the plan of salvation, could you do that? Teach me the word of God, could you do that? Would you be willing? Sadly, many Christians do not know the Word of God, self-professed Christians, because they don't study. They have no clue. 
If I ask you where's the book of Leviticus, where would you say it is? What about Haggai? Where is it? One's third from the front and one's third from the end of the Old Testament. But could you find them if you needed to? Could you show someone from the Bible what they need in order to be saved? If you love them, you can. If you love them, you will. And you will study the Word of God so that you know. Do you read the Word of God every day? Or do you just put it off and say, well, maybe someday I'll read it. Maybe later, right now, I've got to do this or that. If not, what are you going to do with your time? What are your priorities? What Jesus say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is that what we're doing? We need to be doing that, don't we? If you don't think that you have time for daily Bible study, then you've got a problem somewhere else. You've got another problem that needs to be solved. Because you're not putting God first. Either you're too busy earning up a living for yourself, you're saving up your earthly treasures for here, or you're too busy fulfilling your own wants and your own desires. You're not filling the Lord's desire for you. Evangelism is a hard thing to do. But really it's simple. And it's easy. And anyone can do it. You know, if knowing God's will and growing in knowledge is important to you, you will make time for daily Bible study. Of course, if it's not, you won't, will you? 2 Peter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, now and forever. Grow in grace. And grow in knowledge. The only way you can do that is study the Word of God. That's one of the purposes of our evangelism. To seek and encourage other people to study God's Word daily. Everyone needs to study the Word daily. Set aside a point in time. Whether it be in the morning or at lunch or at noon or, or in the evening. Set aside a time for Bible study. Are you always looking for a prospect? Is there someone you know that should be Christians? They really aren't, or at least they think they are, but they really aren't. Take some time and think about two people right now. Write their names down. Think about these two people right now. Two people that need to be non-Christians that you know somewhere. You know somebody that's not a Christian. I mean, look how few of us there are. So that leaves the rest of the world, doesn't it? You know someone who is not a Christian. Perhaps it's a family member, a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, anybody. Just two names. Two names. Within the next week, commit yourself to talking to them about their soul. It'll take a commitment on your part to do it. You don't have to do it alone. You can work with another Christian, two of you. You can go together just like the disciples were sent out, two by two. And go and talk to these individuals. Within this next week, commit yourself to talking to them. Particularly if their soul is extremely important to you. Children, grandchildren, any kind of relative. Share the gospel with them. You know the gospel or you wouldn't be a Christian. You know what the good news is. You know what you have to do. Have you thought of those two people yet? Try to set up a Bible study with them. Get some time. You need time to study with these people, whoever they are. 
It's easy to forget that we all have the responsibility to evangelize. Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Want the Lord on your side? Be on His side. Do what He asks you to do. Keep His commandments. John 14, 15. John 15, verse 14. You are my friend if you do what I tell you. You know, we all have a duty to God. We have a duty to share God's words to the, word to the lost and try to turn them from their sinful ways. It's not a hard thing to do, if they will but listen. You know, if, they, if you've got their ear, then you've got their attention and you can teach them. There will be those who will not hear. Their hearts are hardened. We all have a duty to try to make the disciples for the Lord. We, he needs more followers and we need to be doing our job as he would have us do. Write their names down and make sure you approach them with the gospel. You know, you might take some time to plan the best approach. But you can do it. You know what their habits are. They're your friends. Two of them. You can catch them at a time when you can talk to them. If you're a Christian, you know that plan of salvation, don't you? If you don't, we'll give it to you here at the end of the lesson, and you can make a copy of the slide, those of you who have slides, or ask someone to make you one, or I'll get you one if I have to. Well, even if I don't have to, I still will. So you know enough to teach others how they can be saved from their sins, if you're a Christian yourself. You hear it every Sunday, twice twice a day on Sunday don't allow fear of rejection to hinder your evangelistic efforts they're not going to eat you all they're going to say is I don't want to hear it and you can walk away no fear take somebody with you if you think you're going to have a problem have two people a witness if you truly love these people and you want them to enjoy the blessings of eternal life with you, you'll do everything within your power to get them to believe and obey the truth. It's not hard to do. If you don't love them, of course, you'll take the easy route and you'll do nothing. You'll just become a pew warmer, keeping the pews warm on a cold winter night. Of course, once you've either converted these individuals or you come to the point where it is clear that they're not willing to submit to the Lord at this present time, turn your evangelistic attention to somebody else. That's what Satan does. Satan doesn't just sit there. He's striving to and fro across the world looking for somebody to convert. Why can't we be doing the same? We should be doing the same. We're commanded to do the same, actually. We ought to always be looking for a prospect for God's kingdom. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. No time for rest. Do you accept people quickly? Satan does. He is really, really quick. Do you genuinely welcome a new convert that you've turned from the ways of wickedness? Or do you want to talk behind his back and say, well, I don't know, he used to do this and that. If he said, I believe, and he's baptized, you should be accepting him. Are you an encourager for such people? Barnabas was. According to Acts 9, verses 26 through 28. Verse 27 reads, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road. And that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. 
the apostles weren't quite willing to accept him where they but Barnabas was Barnabas knew what Paul said was right so he took him to the council willingly he accepted what he said are you hesitant to accept members of the church who've fallen away and are restored later you shouldn't be you shouldn't be hesitant you should fully embrace them because they're repenting of their sins and they're coming back you know when God forgives we also must forgive Luke 17 verses 3 and 4 take heed to yourself if your brother sins against you rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day he returns to you saying I repent you shall forgive him be quick to accept him because if he sins Satan will be quick to accept him he surely will Luke 17 verses 3 and 4 finally do you all do you use all the available methods that you have are you really truly trying to make disciples for Jesus there are many methods you can use the message never changes but your method can you can approach him at different times in different ways plan it out think about what you're saying the Apostle Paul approaches different people in different ways but he always preached the pure gospel of the message 1 Corinthians 9 verses 19 through 23 you in our society today and in our culture today it's very different in many respects than it was in the first century we have a numerous ways that we can reach people today that we did not have back in the first century they were not available not even thought of or invented technology has provided many more methods of sowing the seed today starting with the printing press the printed news the press the television constantly glaring in our homes brings the world in all the time why can't we bring Christ in that way GBN is a good broadcasting network out of uh, Olive Branch Tennessee audio recordings the internet satellite satellite TV is really good it's where see uh, the broadcasting company is you know we're talking about full advantage we need to take full advantage of every opportunity I think we do well with our internet broadcast over YouTube we have a lot of hits on it on a weekly basis somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred we may not see the fruit of those labors but somebody somewhere is and we know that the Lord watches and he will ensure that they get the word no matter where they are there are always new ways of trying to reach the lost but ultimately we must always bring the same message of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ the one who was crucified for our sins we need to always remember why he was crucified because of our sins so members of the body of Christ do you have these qualities Satan's got them why don't you have them if not what are you waiting for if we're smart we'll learn from our mistakes and if we're even smarter yet we'll learn from the mistakes of other people look around you see what other people are doing find who you can talk to write down those two names make it do make it happen this week I believe it is wise to learn what we can from the devil and by Matthew 10 verse 16 behold I send you out as sheep among the wolves therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves we know Satan's out there 
when we go out there, we'll, we'll be out there among them, the wolves. Admittedly, Satan uses these noble characteristics for evil, but we can use them and we must use these character, characteristics for good. And may the Lord bless you and keep you as you strive to do His will. And you know that He will. He said He would. For those of you who have forgotten the plan of salvation, print out this slide when you get home. Study it. Get to know it by heart. Memorize all these verses so you can teach other people. If you are a penitent, an erring child of God, remember Acts 8.22. Repent therefore this your wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. If that be your situation, you have the opportunity to, print, to repent right now while we stand and sing.